Okay, so we've got Bigad with us for an upper limb. Viva, are you ready, Bigad? Yes, hi, Walid, I'm ready. Hi, so you've got this 39-year-old lady presented to your a and &E department, road traffic accident uh, versus a moped. This is an isolated injury. Look at the x-rays. Tell me what you can see and how you'd manage this. Uh, uh, those are plain radiographs and to posterior and lateral views uh, of a skeletally mature individual. What I can see is um, displaced mid-shaft fracture of the uh, transverse fracture uh, of the humerus. I would like to examine the entire limb of the patient, assess the neurovascular status and assess the skin uh, integrity for any breaches and open wounds. Um, I would take a detailed history, uh, past medical history of the patient uh, and her hand dominance. Okay, she's right hand dominant, this is her right arm. And uh, when you examined her for the neurovascular, she's, the pulse is intact but she's uh, having problems extending the uh, wrist and the uh, fingers. Uh, given uh, that and the, uh, the injury, uh, I, I, I think this is a radial nerve palsy, uh, which is a common thing that could happen with mid uh, humeral fractures. Um, first thing I would like to do uh, is to reduce this fracture in a better position. Um, uh, this is angulated uh, and displaced. I would uh, do this in the a &E setting, depending upon the local hospital protocols, under uh, sedation. Uh, 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 I would do manual traction and alignment into uh, a U-shaped uh, plaster, which allows uh, good, uh, uh, it will hold the fracture in a good position and it will allow range of motion of the elbow as well. I would obtain post reduction x-rays to check for the position. Uh, I would accept um, various vulgus angulation of around 30 degrees. I would accept anteroposterior angulation of around 20 degrees. Uh, no rotation is accepted and shortening up to one centimeter. Okay, so uh, let's say you've reduced it and you have met your criteria and even went um, even better than, than the criteria you just suggested, but obviously she still has the uh, radial nerve palsy. Uh, what are you gonna do then? Uh, I will discuss with the patient and I'll explain to her that the studies have shown that most of the, uh, this nerve is, is commonly affected with this type of fracture. However, most commonly it's just a neuropraxia, uh, which means that the nerve is just, uh, there's a concussion of the nerve and it recovers after some time. Um, uh, rarely it, the nerve is severed and it needs exploration or anything to be done in terms of a repair. Um, so I'll explain to her that given the good reduction that we have achieved, we can manage this non-operatively. Um, and look for signs of recovery of the nerve, I would send her home um, with a cock-up splint to support the wrist drop, uh, advise physiotherapy of the uh, muscles of the uh, forearm, and I will see her in clinic again with weekly x-rays for follow-up to make sure that we have not lost the reduction. Um, I would also uh, oh, keep, keep examining her uh, extensors, uh, wrist extensors and finger extensors for signs of radial nerve uh, recovery, um, uh, I would expect the extensor uh, carpi radialis brevis, uh, which does the extension of the wrist, to recover the first one. Uh, and the last one recovered, to recover is the extensor indices. If no recovery is seen within six uh, weeks. It seems that you're uh, up to date with this. Uh, what if the other, uh, it was the other way around, meaning that uh, the reduction was not acceptable, but she had the radial nerve palsy. What would you do then? If it's not acceptable, then I would explain to her that she would need to have an operation uh, to put this in the right position and fix it to allow it to heal. Uh, I'm aware, and I'll discuss with the patient, that there are two ways to fix mid tumor fractures, either an intramedullary nail, which is a device that goes inside the bone. Which one would you use? Um, uh, I would offer her open reduction to fixation using platen screws. Uh, right. I'm aware that there is a Cochrane review that has shown no difference in terms of the outcomes and the uh, functional outcomes and the union rates. However, the, uh, the nails cause more shoulder problems in terms of irritation, pain, and rotator cuff problems. What Therefore, about I would offer her a plate. Um, I could use a posterior approach or an anterolateral approach. However, uh, I would discuss this first with one of our microsurgery and peripheral mm -hmm. nerve surgeons uh, in our unit. Um, and if I could uh, get one of the consultants to be uh, uh, scrubbed with me in surgery, we can do a posterior approach. And if the nerve is found to be torn, then they can, uh, he can do a, a direct nerve repair if possible. Uh, if, however, I will be operating on my own, uh, I'm aware that there are two different schools. Some of the uh, uh, surgeons advocate a posterior approach so you can directly see the nerve and identify whether it's torn or not. If it's torn, you would tag it with uh, uh, silk sutures. 
and, and proceed with your fixation. Others advocate an anterolateral approach to keep the posterior approach pristine for later on nerve exploration. Shall the nerve uh, not recover? Thank you, Vigad. That's very good. Thank you. Thank you, Alid. Yes, thank you, Bigat, for this viva. I think you covered uh, all the important points. Um, so you mentioned the conservative treatment of the humeral shaft fracture in case of a radial nerve palsy and uh, that you don't need to rush to surgery even if uh, there is a radial nerve palsy as most of them would uh, recover. You also, uh, also mentioned what you would do if uh, you needed surgical fixation with a radial nerve palsy. There is a lot of debate about this topic. You managed to get through the debate by mentioning the two schools and that you will discuss this with your microsurgery colleagues, which I think is a wise thing to uh, say in the exam. Um, these are uh, two uh, uh, studies you can have a look at. Uh, their Cochrane reviews. Uh, the first one talks about surgical treatment versus non-surgical uh, treatment, saying that both have uh, equal outcomes. Um, and as Bigad mentioned, there are acceptance criteria you can also mention in your exam. Uh, the second one looks at uh, plating versus interim dairy nails of the humeral fracture. And um, there were no difference in the um, non-union rates between both groups, but the main difference was uh, the shoulder uh, problems that occurred in the nailing group. Okay, thank you, Bigad. Thank Anything you. Anything you want to add? Thank you. Thank you.